Welcome to Overanalyzing Vlogs, where I think too much about something. Or do I? You've heard of Socrates, I hope. Ancient Greek philosopher who was the teacher of Plato, who was the teacher of Aristotle, who was the teacher of Alexander the Great. So, pretty important guy. But Socrates lived about two and a half thousand years ago in ancient Athens, and we don't have any of his original work. All we have of his philosophy is what other people said he said, notably Plato's dialogues, which record edited and probably fictionalized and touched up, versions of conversations that Socrates had with other people, as well as the details of his trial and execution. Spoiler alert. And some people have wondered how we are supposed to separate what Socrates supposedly said from what he actually said, especially given that some of the sources seem to contradict each other. This is the so-called Socratic problem. But some people have gone even further and asked, well, was Socrates a real bloke, or was he just an invention of Plato? If he was real, then Plato's dialogues are like the first ever fan fiction. And if he wasn't real, then it's more like self-insert fan fiction. Because we think we know that in later works, like Plato's Republic, for instance, he uses the character of Socrates to express views that are actually his own. So how do we know that Plato wasn't just doing that all the time? Well, we can be fairly certain that Socrates was a real man, at least as certain as we can be about anybody back then, because Plato isn't the only person who mentions him. Xenophon, who was another of Socrates' students, also records conversations that he supposedly had with the man. And Aristophanes, a contemporary playwright, wrote a play called The Clouds, which took the piss out of Socrates. And apparently it took the piss so much that Plato says it contributed to the ill feeling that led to Socrates' trial. Now, it's possible that all three writers were just using the fictional character of Socrates for their own ends, and a proper historical analysis of those sources would have to be done by people who are more qualified than me in history. But I think one factor that contributes to the idea that Socrates was a real bloke is that he's not described as being particularly extraordinary. If all three writers said, oh yeah, Socrates could fly and talk to animals and fire lasers out of his beard, well then that would be a little bit unbelievable and we go, well I'm not sure this person was actually ever real. But apparently, he was a bit of a bum, a bit of a slob, a bit of a troll, and also quite a heavy drinker. And all of those things are normal enough to be believable. Now apparently he also had an imperviousness to hot and cold, which might seem slightly unrealistic, but he's also supposed to have been a soldier in the Peloponnesian War, the war against Sparta. So he must have been, it stands to reason, pretty tough as well. I would also argue that for us as philosophers, it doesn't really matter whether Socrates was real or not. Just like for actors, it doesn't really matter whether Shakespeare was actually Francis Bacon in disguise. If you found out tomorrow that all of Shakespeare's plays were actually written by somebody else, well then it's a very interesting historical fact, but it's not going to change the way anybody acts Shakespeare. Similarly, if Socrates was just an invention of Plato, then all of the work that Socrates did is still informative and the questions he asked are still provocative and he still contributed a huge amount to the way we've done philosophy for the last two and a half thousand years and even today. So just like if Shakespeare's plays were written by somebody else, they're still moving and beautiful and poetic and powerful, it doesn't really matter for philosophers whether Socrates was real or not. But I'm probably just reading too much into it. Oh, am I?